Welcome back to a new season of The Sideliners. As usual, I'm Evan Hensley, and with me is my co-host, Michael Kerman. That's right, and today we're talking football, EMU, college, and the NFL. Also, a few injuries that occurred over the past week. So let's just jump into it. Let's start with Eastern. All right, yeah, so, I mean, EMU lost. Very close game to Toledo, 15-20, to 20, and honestly, I was much more impressed with this game than I have been a lot of Eastern's games, honestly. I mean, this, this defense is playing off the charts right now. They're currently ranked first in the MAC in points allowed, which is nuts. This is a defense two years ago was arguably the worst defense in the entire country. Yep. Um, and they're also first in sacks a game, which they're averaging three sacks a game. Yeah. And if you look here, I mean, EMU held Toledo to only 130 rushing yards. Now, that's actually crazy when you think about the fact that Toledo is a rush first team. I mean, they are always running the ball. They had 42 attempts and they only got up to 130 yards. That's impressive. Now, one of the big issues was the fact that we did allow 289 yards through the air. It's really not as bad when you think about the fact that there were no touchdown passes. Those were all in the running game, but they've got to figure out a way to stop the other team. Vince Calhoun had his strongest play of the year with 16 total tackles. I mean, it was impressive. Mm -hmm. And if you can see, you'll see right here, um, Brogan Roback went 23 for 39, 226, two touchdowns, two interceptions. And, you know, you're looking for better performances out of him. But back, back to what Eastern was doing defensively, you're playing the best quarterback in the entire conference. Yep. Logan Woodside is phenomenal. He's mm -hmm. been torching defense, defenses lately. He did a really good job against the University of Miami just a couple weekends ago. Yep. And... He's just been doing a phenomenal job carrying this Toledo defense, this offense, while also having a running game despite losing Kareem Hunt to the yeah, draft and last year. You look at still, though, what Eastern's defense is doing. They are top 15 in the country in sacks. I mean, they're impressive. They had four sacks this game. Both Luke McLean and Brody Hoying each had a sack apiece. I mean, it was impressive. Their biggest issue, though, is their offense. Brogan Roback, I mean, as you saw, had a, he had a good game, okay? But his issue was, along with those two touchdowns, were two interceptions. He mm. has to find a way to take care of the football. He has been struggling this year. Almost every game he's had about an interception a game throughout the, the season. This offense looks completely different than it has the past yeah. two years. I mean, two years ago, the, a rowback was in this running game was carrying the offense, the carrying the team yep. into a one and eleven record. And last year, going seven and six, they. They relied on Brogan to get the get the ball down the field because they lost Shaq Van, and Shaq Van's actually I think lost a starting job because of this. He he's lost to Ian Erickson. It's been an offense that can't run the ball. But they also are struggling to throw the ball too, and there's really no reason to it other than you can look at the defense having not the defense the offensive line having three new starters along yeah. the line, and you have the weapons at receiver. There's no doubt. Sergio Bailey's arguably the best receiver in the MAC. Oh, he's hands down the top player for this team, too. He just last game, he had 72 receiving yards. He's averaging just over 80 receiving yards a game. Between him and Antoine Porter, those are Brogan's biggest supporting cast. But the issue is, just like you said, Shaq Van's not running the ball well. Without a good running game, it's so easy to defend. Mm -hmm. That is why Brogan is struggling, because every team knows to just key in on him. And he was close in the beginning of the year to reaching Charlie Batch's touchdown record. Mm -hmm. At this rate, he might just barely make it. He, I think it's around 60-some touchdowns in the mm -hmm. season, and I think he needed 16 in the beginning of the year. He's averaging just, actually, I think, a touchdown a game. If you want to succeed in the MAC against these very strong teams, mm -hmm. you need to average as a quarterback more than one touchdown a game. And with your running game, you have to find out something to do. Oh, something. It, it doesn't help that um, he's literally one interception away from equaling the amount of interceptions he threw all of last year. While also, he's only thrown five touchdowns. Yep. He threw 18 last year, yep. which still wasn't a high number, but 18 compared to five, and we're almost midway through the year. And just looking at his QBR alone, he was 65 adjusted QBR last year. It's pretty solid for a guy who, you, who you, he's not a great quarterback. He's a good quarterback in the MAC level. But this year, 36.7. Yep. That's horrible. Yep. But also looking at these stats, he's also going to get sacked more than any year before. And like I said, I, I personally think it comes down to the running game. If Shaq Van 
Beck or Erickson cannot figure this out. I mean, those are three guys who last year were all very, they're very good players. Mm -hmm. I mean, they succeeded. Maybe we switch to the three-headed monster. Who, I mean, who knows? But in order for Brogan Roback to do well, we have to figure this out. And now we need to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. Welcome to one of the fastest growing universities for freshmen in Michigan. A university where differences are celebrated. Where faculty believe their student success is their success. Where our Honors College has doubled in size and where we are nationally recognized for educating and improving our community. Being here is about being part of something bigger. It's about being part of a family. It's about fitting in while standing out. Now's the time to challenge yourself and be surrounded by people who truly care about your success. So whether you become an artist who inspires others, a creator who develops something new, or an innovator who changes the way people think, this is your opportunity. Fuel your curiosity through research. Hit the stage and enrich the lives of others. Compete in Division I athletics. No matter your path, we all bleed green. So roll up your sleeves. Dive in. Experience learning in and out of the classroom. Be a student of life. Welcome to higher education. Welcome to Eastern Michigan University. Welcome home. And welcome back. All right, we're moving on to college teams. Yes, we are. And probably the most talked about game throughout the weekend, Iowa State Cyclones against Oklahoma Sooners. I mean, hands down, it was the biggest upset this weekend. But I think this could possibly be the biggest upset in the college football season all year. Yeah, this game might have single-handedly ruined Oklahoma's year. Yeah. Because the Big 12 is not a conference that is a guaranteed to get a playoff, get a playoff team. Because Oklahoma State's gone down. Oklahoma's gone down. Yep. Is TCU going to be the next team to go down? And if you look at the stats alone, Kyle Kemp from Iowa State was just on fire. He was, he was 18 for 24 for 343 yards and three touchdowns. While my, the guy I chose to win the Heisman this year, Baker Mayfield, he wasn't limited, but they just couldn't score. Yep. I mean, you look at it, 24 of 33 for 306 yards and two touchdowns. Neither quarterback had a turnover. I mean, it, it, overall, it was a very impressive game. But I think the biggest thing that stands out to me is the fact that Kyle Kemp had more yards than Baker Mayfield, and yet Baker Mayfield had, had as many completions as he did, as Kemp did attempts. I mean, Kyle Kemp was just making every pass count. Mm -hmm. Every single pass. No matter what he did, he could do no wrong. Imagine if it got to the point where he threw 24 total pass, or 24 total completions. Imagine what his yards from what he put up against Oklahoma's mm -hmm. defense could have been. Oh, they, Oklahoma, Iowa State could not run the ball the other day. No. Two and a half yards a carry, but he averaged 14.3 yards an attempt, not a completion, an attempt. Yep. So he torched a Oklahoma defense that has been an issue for this team all year long. Yep. And we knew that if this offense could not put, I don't know, 35, 40 on the board every single game, there might be a couple games where they could they could sneak sneak one out and lose. Yeah. And I mean, when you look just, I'm talking solely on the offenses, Oklahoma destroyed Iowa State. Mm -hmm. They had. 323 total passing yards, and 
190 rushing yards. I mean, Iowa State's defense was getting torched all game, mm -hmm. but they just kept finding ways to slow down Oklahoma when they needed to. Mm -hmm. And my star player was um, Iowa State's kicker. I mean, he was three for three on field goals and three for three on extra points. 12 points alone just from him. And you look at the score, they outscored Oklahoma 11 to zero in the third quarter, which is huge. To shut out one of the best offenses in college in a, a whole quarter, mm -hmm. that's impressive. And then they outscored them in the fourth quarter, 14 to seven. This was the most all around game I think I've ever seen Iowa State play mm -hmm. throughout the season. And I mean, it, it doesn't lie. It's going to go down as the biggest upset this year. It's impressive. But one thing I do want to do is let's take our focus to U of M versus Michigan State. First off, I want to say coming into the weekend, I thought U of M was going to win and I wanted them to win. What were your opinion? I thought U of M was going to win close because this mm -hmm. offense is not very, not nothing special that oh, Michigan it's, has. Oh, it's sad this year. Um, it is. But uh, I thought they'd pull it off. I know Michigan State, I, are they were going to compete. I knew it was going to mm -hmm. be a close, low scoring battle. But I think they definitely got the edge from Mother Nature that the other night. That, that monsoon that was the second half yep. really, really helped helped uh, keep Michigan from scoring. And I think Michigan's biggest issue was, like you said, it was pouring rain. Why were they still throwing the ball? Mm -hmm. O'Corn was already not having a great game before the rain truly started coming down. But, I mean, you look right here. State's quarterback was 11 of 22. They only threw it 22 times. He had 94 yards total and one touchdown. O'Corn threw <coughs> it 35 times while completing less than half. Now, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. some of those were drops. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were plenty of wide open guys that just dropped the ball or flew through their hands. Michigan's wideouts are just as much at fault as O'Corn is. Mm -hmm. But 198 yards and three interceptions. That cannot happen, especially against a Michigan State defense that has been notorious for making Michigan pay on if he passes, mm -hmm. if he runs, or just overall, if he plays. Oh, Michigan State recruiting-wise has not been bringing in top-level talent. No. But uh, Mark D'Antonio is arguably the best co coach in the country when it comes to making something out of nothing. Yep. And that's what happened. He, they, took a, they took a team, a dynamic team, with a ton of four and five star recruits mm -hmm. a ton of guys everybody oh he's gonna be great Rashawn Gary's gonna be great and they came out held the offense to basically nothing 10 points turned the ball over five four five turnovers yep that's huge and, we're, and when you have a young quarterback in Brian Lewerke for Michigan State mm -hmm. and he does not have a turnover yep. that changes the game no turnover on offense if you have no turnovers on offense you're playing a team that's ranked in the top ten of the country. Yep. And they, you force more than I don't know three turnovers in that game. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a shot in that game. Yeah. And a big thing that people don't realize is Brian Lewark was their best running back oh, also yeah. in that game. He had 15 carries for 61 yards and a touchdown. I mean, State figured it out when the rain started coming down. They kept the ball in their running back or their quarterback's hand, and they were running it. Mm -hmm. Michigan just did not seem to get that memo. It's like. All they wanted to do was try to throw it down the throats of State, and it wasn't working. State had four sacks in one QB hurry. I mean, they were getting after O'Corn. I'm not saying it's all his fault, mm -hmm. okay? Many of these passes, he was getting hit or the pressure was coming. I'm not making an excuse for him, but he has to take care of the ball. He has to know if the gap is too small, don't throw it. Mm -hmm. If it's raining, I mean, this is on the offensive coordinator. Don't throw it. You just don't throw it. You're not down by much. They, they lost the game 14 to 10. And the whole fourth quarter, no one scored. Mm -hmm. I truly feel if Michigan would have just held onto the ball and ran it, they had a strong chance of winning that game. They weren't out of it. Oh, definitely. It just, it comes down to coaching. Mm -hmm. I think the off, I saw a different Michigan State offensive playbook the other night. They had creative, a bunch of different creative, different plays. I think that's what, what was one of the Lurkey's touchdowns was a creative run. Mm -hmm. I think that comes down to coaching, and Mark D'Antonio out coached Jim Harbaugh in the big house. Yep, that's what this comes down to. You know, I've said it many times to just many of my friends. I think Michigan 
has spent so much time in the past several years losing to state mm -hmm. that I just don't know if they know how to beat them anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't, it's the same thing with Ohio State. We have spent so many of the last years losing to those teams. I think they forgot how to beat these top teams. Not even just a top team across the country, but a top team in the Big Ten that they need to beat. Mm -hmm. And like I said, when you stick to the run game, like Michigan State did, it's hard not to win, especially when it's pouring rain and the other team's throwing it for some reason. Oh, I know, and I saw a crazy stat, absolutely nuts stat. Both Jim Harbaugh has the same record as uh, Brady Hoke, but before, we're going to get back to the NFL. We're going to take a break and go to the NFL. Stay with us. My name is Shanna Gilkison, and ETV has been a very important part of my life, uh, especially for the last four years. I got my start at ETV in my third semester at Eastern from fellow students, and it's been a great experience. Working with all these new people that I didn't know before, it's very awesome just seeing how willing people are to get together and uh, create something from scratch. I'm Shanna Gilkison for Eastern Weekly, and this is eWalking. I will also be hosting and producing a sort of like a late night style talk show. Everyone that's here wants to be here. They care to be here, they want to work, they want to learn, and with that kind of environment, everybody benefits. I tell you, I've, I've been doing really well, very successful here at Eastern, but it wasn't until I really became part of the ETV club that I really felt like I, I was getting more of what I needed as a student. We decided that we wanted to do things above and beyond uh, our coursework, so um, I was part of founding the ETV Student Org. It just so happened that Shanna was in one of my classes and uh, she told me to come and I showed up and it was very like a very warm welcome like everybody was very nice to me right away and uh, they actually had an idea to make a sitcom or a uh, actually they called it a soap opera at that time and they said they had uh, they weren't sure exactly what they wanted but they wanted one thing they knew that they wanted this guy uh, his name is Ramon to be their main character. I mean, that was kind of how uh, the show Week at a Glance kind of took off. Beyond Eastern's Walls, when I'm done here, I'll probably be working with some people from ETV, again, professionally. And I think a lot of students don't take advantage of what they should with organizations on campus, and ETV is one of the best. And we're back, and we are talking football. And it was a it was a pretty interesting weekend. It's been a, the NFL season this early has been pretty a lot, a lot of parity yeah. early. Yep. A lot of teams that we expected to go start the season four and 5 and have all have lost a game or two. Yep. And the teams we expected to start zero and five didn't. Yeah. Jets being yeah, one of them. Yeah. They a winning record. Through. Yeah. But uh, we're gonna start with the Lions. We're gonna talk about a little bit of the Lions when the Lions hosted the Panthers this weekend. And uh, you want to get started? Yeah, so Lions unfortunately lost. It was a very close game. You know, the Panthers were able to hold off the comeback king and Matt Stafford, even though he did put up 14 unanswered points in the fourth quarter. Uh, I think a lot of what this game, I think the biggest issue for the Lions was the fact that Cam Newton seems to have found his groove. Back-to-back 300-plus -back passing yard games and three passing touchdowns in both games. I mean, He's already arguably the most dynamic quarterback in the NFL. The guy's built like a tight end, but throws like Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. I mean, how, how can you stop that guy? And the weird thing was is Detroit's defense has been very solid this year. They have been solid, and it just seemed like they could not handle them. And you'll see right here, it said uh, Panthers won 27-24 at Ford Field. Important stats. Cam, like you said, Cam Newton, another great game after the uh, he destroyed the Patriots defense last week. Yep. 33 for 26, 355 yards, three TDs and no interceptions. And his big target this game 
was his tight end, Ed, Ed Dixon, who had 175 yards, including a 64, 64 yard. And uh, Matt Stafford, a lot of those yards came in the fourth quarter, like you said, yep. because they only had forced 10 points going into the fourth. Yep. And you can't, you can't win a game mm -hmm. that you're down 27 to 10 going into the fourth. I mean, look, he gave them a run. Mm -hmm. He did. Final score, 27 to 24. That's unreal. But like you said, Ed Dixon was the number one target. But I want to go to two guys who I think are really coming in as a dynamic duo as wide receivers of Kelvin Benjamin and Devin Funches. Both guys had a touchdown this game. Devin Funches is going on back-to-back -back games with a touchdown. Last game he had two. The U of M star, I mean, he, he's really showing up. And Kelvin Benjamin is proving everyone wrong. You know, everyone was kind of iffy after his injury. Like, how's he going to show up? How's he going to play? He's come into this year, started off a little slow, but the whole team did. But he is proving himself worthy. And like I said, I think this comes down to Detroit's, honestly, their defense. Mm -hmm. They were so strong, and they just they weren't able to pull it out in the end in first three quarters they couldn't do anything but if you want there's a big <laughs> game I want to talk about the Steelers and the Jags oh th th this was a nuts game you yes know, this is I felt like I was watching Big Ben like decombust and just dismantle himself while yep. he was on the field five interceptions from a quarterback who going into the year I thought was a top three quarterback of the NFL yep. And with some of the best weapons in the entire in the entire football league, it's nuts that this team is now falling to three and two and lost to a team like the Jacksonville Jaguars, who everybody expected to win no more than five games. Yep, but I think we got to give the Jags a lot of credit. I mean, like you said, five interceptions, two of them were pick sixes. They, along with the Panthers' dynamic duo, I think the Jags have a dynamic duo with AJ Boye and Jalen Ramsey. Those two cornerbacks are outstanding. I won't call them the new no-fly zone, but those two, I mean, you do not want to be passing on this team, and you don't want to run because they're all, their defensive line is so strong too. I mean, look, a lot of this does come down to Big Ben. You know, you're at home. You have no excuse. You have a great offensive line. You have wide receivers that, in reality, every team is afraid to go against, and you have one of the most dynamic running backs. Like, you look right here. He still threw for over 300 yards. Okay, 312 yards, but the five interceptions. The impressive thing for the Jacksonville Jaguars is 28 rushes and 181 yards for Leonard Fournette. I mean, 90 of them, sure, came off of one big touchdown run, but that guy is unstoppable, and he needs to be because Blake Bortles still, like everyone thought coming into the year, is not panning out. He had a couple games early on this year that he... He played decently well. Yeah. People were starting to think, oh, it was Blake Bortles back. But it's still the same Blake Bortles. Yep. Until he until he fixes his mechanics mm -hmm. and can start understanding defenses more well. And this offensive line plays better. Clearly the offensive line is playing better because Leonard Fournette's not getting those 181 yards by himself. No. I think it's – I don't know if it comes down to the, their pass blocking or if it's truly on Blake Bortles just not being comfortable behind them or – you know, he just he doesn't look comfortable out there. He did very well. I think it was uh, last week against the um, the Baltimore Ravens. I think he threw three touchdown passes in that game. But if you're the Jacksonville, you've got a good team. You are prepared to take the next step. And if Blake Bortles can get things going, this is a scary team. You do not want to face them because you have one of the top running backs and your defense is outstanding. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back with some injuries that occurred in the NFL. Are you an EMU student interested in getting a first-hand experience working at a radio station? Well, say no more. EMU offers a class through Eagle Radio that will thoroughly prepare you for a real-life experience. But first, you have to register for the class. Pick a date and a time slot. Then the world is yours. Eagle Radio allows you to be fully independent and customize your own show. Have real conversations about the news, celebrity gossip, update listeners about the weather, 
play a trivia game, it's your show. You're free to name your show whatever you want and play any edited music of your choice. If you love having heated debates and you feel your words need to be heard, then Eagle Radio is just for you. So we saw a ton of major players get injured this week. Yep. Uh, and let's just start with the top ones. Go ahead. We'll just JJ Watt again. Mm-hmm. Second year in a row. Yep. It's starting to look like he may have that Gronk kind of constantly getting injured mm-hmm. mentality. Yep. Superstar player just cannot figure it out. I mean, he has what is technically called a tibial plateau fracture, and it. I mean, it's gruesome. This guy could not mean more to a team, let alone an entire city and state like Houston, Texas. What what this guy has done, not just for the team, but for the entire state of Texas and the city of Houston in the time of Hurricane Harvey, it couldn't be a more devastating injury in the NFL. He's there not, couldn't be. This guy's not just a, a player. He's not just no. a star. He's not just a superstar. He is an icon yep. for not just that city, but that state like you just said in this country. He is the definition of Captain America in the National Football League because yep. he's everything you want in a person. And, and you know, to see a good person like, like that get hurt, it breaks it, their it, hearts. It hurts. Yeah. And now the other big injury I'm sure everyone knows, especially if you do fantasy football, Odell Beckham Jr. Now this one hurt a lot of people. He, uh, he has a fractured or a broken ankle and will have season-ending ankle surgery this week. Now, this one hurts, especially for a Giants team that is already 0-5. Oh, this is arguably the worst offense in football, which is yep. nuts compared to a lot of people thought, oh, this, this could, team could borderline be a Super Bowl contender. Yep. They're 0-5, and it does not help that Brandon Marshall's also out for the year. Yep. Sterling Shepard hurt himself this yep. past game. And you don't have a running game. You don't no. have anything that's called an offensive line. No. You have a bunch of big guys trying to block, and they're not blocking anybody. No. They're, I mean, they're failing. And, you know, it, it really hurts because their whole format to winning was this offense. They were not relying on the defense. They weren't even relying on the running game. They were relying solely on the passing game. Now, with Odell and Brandon Marshall getting injured, I mean, who do you fall back on? I mean, you can name the one guy, Sterling Shepard, but besides him, can you, off the top of your head, name one guy that can step in and even remotely fill the shoes of Odell Beckham Jr.? I mean, you have the rookie tight end, Evan Ingram, yep. out of Ole Miss. That's got to be the main guy you're going to see get a lot of balls thrown his way now. But are we going to bring back Victor Cruz? Is Victor Cruz going to go back to New York? Yeah. I mean, Is Hakeem Ter- Nixon come out of retirement? Terrell Owens and Ocho Cinco all tweeted out to the Giants, you know, hey, they're ready. They're ready to come out of retirement. O- or uh, Eli Manning, I don't think there's much worse options he could have. I'm going to say. This team, this team is just struggling. And then another big injury for the same team as J.J. Watt is Whitney Marcellus. He has a torn pectoral muscle. He is out for the year. I mean, this one, this really hurts because your, your main guys, two, three of your main guys are Whitney Marcellus, Jadavian Clowney, and J.J. Watt. Now two of those three guys are out. What, what do you do if you're the Texans defense? Um, Deshaun Watson's going to have to start scoring some more points. Yep. That's really, that's how it's going to have to be because um, you're looking at, in my opinion, one of the best defenses in football, particularly in the front seven, mm-hmm. because you have those three guys. Yep. And having a former number one overall pick in Jadavian Clowney still there helps, but now he's just going to get all the double teams because J.J. Watt and Whitney Marcellus aren't there. And all right, that is all the time we have this week. If you like what you see, feel free to follow us on YouTube and check out other shows that ETV has to offer. Thank you. Tune in next time.